Cyberimmune practices we are talking about in these videos are universal and are not fundamentally tied to any specific operating system. At the same time, Kaspersky OS is for sure an effective platform for the development of Cyberimmune solutions, meeting the architectural requirements of Cyberimmunity out of the box. And today I will talk with Andrei Nayenko, Kaspersky OS Microkernel Development Team Manager, about the place of Kaspersky OS among other operating systems and where we are moving with this development. Let's talk about our Kaspersky OS operating systems. <laughs> Hello, Andrei. Hi. Let's talk about our Kaspersky OS uh, yeah. <laughs> operating system now. Yeah. We have already talked quite a lot about our difference with monolithic kernels, but what about our place in micro-kernel operating system world? How we are different and what are our benefits, our features? Yeah, actually, from the very beginning, we have chosen a very pragmatic approach to the design. We were picking some technologies that existed before and uh, integrated them together. For example, we have object capabilities. This is something you can find in various other designs like SEL4. Uh, it's a tried and uh, proved approach, actually. It's a good thing to have. Uh, but on the other hand, we have uh, a KSM, Kaspersky Security Monitor. This is a reference monitor, uh, actually quite an old idea, but anyway, uh, very few operating systems implement this and it's quite a unique feature for us because we can combine the abilities provided by object capabilities and the reference monitor. Those things together allow us to build uh, operating systems, solutions to build solutions uh, that can solve a lot of other things and put under control uh, communications that can't be controlled uh, specifically this way in other operating systems. Uh, so I think the combination of technologies, on the other hand, and the design, the architecture of the solution is our another uh, killing feature. Uh, what I mean here, uh, when you approach security, you can't approach it uh, like something abstract. Uh, security is something very um, definite, it's something on the ground. So you need to design your solution to be secure. You need a model of threats, uh, you need analysis work. And uh, our operating system provides you a tool uh, to build such uh, system. So it's uh, like uh, a Lego blocks, uh, Lego blocks that you can combine to build a secure solution. And that's what makes us different from other operating systems. Our cyber immune approach. With this approach, you can build an operating system, build a solution that is secure by design. And our kernel provides the tools to build such designs. So there are specialized systems that perform some predefined uh, functions and there are general purpose systems. And uh, with our Kaspersky OS operating system, we are now moving towards not only the specialized devices, but uh, also uh, towards general purpose devices. Could you explain uh, what these two uh, directions, uh, why are they different and what uh, this shift from uh, specialized devices to general purpose devices mean from the technical perspective? Well, actually, when the Kaspersky operating system appeared, it was targeting various niche devices uh, like embedded systems. When you have all processes starting on the, on the system boot, all connections between processes made on the start, so you had basically a static system uh, that didn't perform some dynamic uh, operations. Uh, like uh, when you have some network equipment, you just power it on and it does its job until you power it off, that's it. Now we are moving to more complex, more dynamic systems and that's a great challenge for us because we have to invent new approaches that will work in this uh, environment, in those circumstances. Uh, because, for example, what do you expect from a smartphone OS, for example? 
Uh, it needs to install applications. It needs to download them, verify them, launch them, kill them sometimes. So, so it needs to manage the life cycle. So there is a huge amount of problems to solve in dynamic systems. So yeah, we are moving towards more complex, more dynamic systems. We have a lot of challenges and it's actually a great thing, but I think because mm, we need to solve them and that's what moves us forward.